What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great day today. So let's go ahead and talk about Pokemon investments. And if you are serious about Pokemon investing and you definitely want to, you know, really get into Pokemon investing and you really want to put in a large amount of capital, in my opinion, a large amount of capital that I, would indicate to me that someone is serious about investing is anything that's $10,000 or more. If you invest 10 grand or more into Pokemon, I would consider you as a serious investor, in my opinion. Um, obviously, people have different opinions of what a serious investor is, whatever the case may be. But in my opinion, 10 grand is the number that I'm going to go with, okay? So let's go ahead and start writing stuff on the whiteboard. Uh, if you are definitely considering, you know, investing in Pokemon, definitely pay attention to this. This is not financial advice. This is just my own recommendation for entertainment purposes. So do not take this you know, as, you know, set in stone, do your own research, and obviously listen to different sources to determine what you should do, okay? This is just my version of it. So, 10 grand. We got $10,000 that we want to allocate to Pokemon, right? Now, there are three different things that I think, in my opinion, there are good investment vehicles that you can diversify within the Pokemon space that I think are good, uh, good investments. Now, everyone's gonna tell you if you're watching this, a lot of people are going to tell you and advise you that you should only just buy sealed product, right? The reason why you should only buy sealed products is because, you know, it's predictable, the, you know, it's a lot safer, right? It's a lot safer than the other things you can invest in in the Pokemon space. Uh, and, you know, it's definitely, you know, you get 10% year over year for your, you know, annual returns and everything like that. And people look at sealed product as, the s &P, right? It's safer, right? And that's not bad advice at all. It's definitely, there's a lot of merit to that, to that advice. However, it depends on your goals. If you only want to just buy sealed product, then you should at least know the cons of what that's going to look like when you're storing all of that, okay? All that sealed product, okay? So the major thing you have to consider about buying a shit ton of sealed product is that one, you have to find a place where to store it. I do not recommend storing your sealed product in a garage. You need a ventilated room that has, you know, air condition um, and it's it's just it's room temperature because you don't want to store your 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 investment in, in a in a storage unit and it's hot. The weather conditions can you know it can be you know humid and outside humid outside and it can definitely affect the the integrity of these boxes and definitely the packs that can ruin the value of your investment, okay? So consider that when you go and buy a sealed product, you have to store it in a ventilated room, in a room temperature, you know, you know, in space, basically, whether it's a basement or it's another room, extra room, extra space, or a loft, right? And then think about it, 10 grand. Let's say you buy 10 grand worth of sealed product. That's like anywhere from like 100 to 150 cases, okay? Depending like what you're buying. That's a lot of cases. That's a lot of cases, okay? Um, actually 100 cases, maybe like 50 to 100 cases, right? Not 150, maybe 50 to 100 cases. But still, 50 to 100 cases is a lot of cases, okay? Um, and you definitely don't want a bunch of boxes boxes stacked up in your, in your bedroom, right? That's very inconvenient and that's kind of annoying, right? I don't know about you, that would annoy me if I had a bunch of boxes stacked up in my own room, right? Um, if I was investing, right, into just sealed product. Now, to sell this stuff, to get rid of it, let's say you get rid of it on eBay, you're gonna have to ship it. Shipping is a nightmare. Shipping, you have to buy the box, you gotta buy the shipping materials, like, you know, bubble, uh, you know, you gotta buy bubble wrap um, and, and stuffing to make sure it doesn't move and rattle around in the, in the box. That way it's going through transit in a very smooth manner. That costs like an extra $20, not even including the eBay fee that you have to pay after the transaction's completed on eBay. So you're losing out on a lot of potential you know, uh, there's a lot of costs that are, in, that are involved that potentially can lose out on a lot of your capital gains when you're only just investing in sealed. People don't consider that when they're only investing in sealed. People don't think about that stuff, okay? So sealed, I have a certain percentage of what I think you should allocate this 10 grand. So in my opinion, you should probably allocate 50% of this number into sealed. My own recommendation, my own opinion, right? So that's going to be 5,000. Five grand, okay? Five grand is what you're investing in with the sealed, okay? Now, 
Let's talk about graded cards. What's the con about graded cards? Graded cards that I'm gonna think that people are gonna be mostly scared of is the volatility, okay? The volatility in graded cards is definitely real. You can definitely make two, three X, you know, in, 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 a, in a cycle, in a market cycle. You can definitely three, four, five X your money, depending on like when you bought the slab and how long you hold on to it. Now, on the flip side, slabs can go down by a lot. They can correct all the way down to 30, 40, 50% sometimes uh, in a bad bear market, right? Okay, so people think that graded cards, you know, investing in, at all in graded cards can be very dangerous, right? Um, now, you definitely don't want to miss out on that potential, on those potential gains, right? If you're, diver if you're diversifying, right? I would say for graded cards, obviously you don't want to put all your money in graded cards, right? I would say 20% is a healthy number that you want to allocate into, uh, into graded cards. So 20%, okay, so we're at 5,000. So 20%, I'm gonna say 20% of what, five grand is, it's gonna be two grand, okay? So two grand. I don't know why it took so long for me to figure it out. And then now you have three grand left, okay? What are you gonna do with the rest of that three grand, in my opinion? You're gonna go ahead and buy raw cards, which is gonna be 30%. 30% of 10 grand, which is gonna be your last three grand, okay? So 30% should be in raw. Now, what's, what's the issue with raw cards? Raw cards can be annoyingly undervalued, okay? Um, you know, you're gonna to have to basically sell a lot of volume to see some type of growth. Now, it depends on what raw cards you're gonna get. If you're gonna get full arts and everything like that, full arts, yeah, they're anywhere from like five to 10, 20 dollars on some full arts. And then alternate arts can be anywhere from like 40, 50, 60 to 100 dollars a piece. Um, you know, that can be a, you know, tiresome when you go to sell it all on eBay because you have to individually pack each card. That's a lot of volume, that's a lot of, you know, expenses for your shipping and everything like that. So that's a con that you have to weigh in with raw. However, there's a pro with raw. Raw is not as volatile as great. Okay. That's why I would allocate 30%. So that's another three grand. Okay. So let's say you do this. Let's say you allocate all the things you want to allocate, uh, the sealed, graded and raw. Okay. Now the reason why you want to be diverse like this. Okay. It's because if you put all your cash in sealed and let's say sealed product is not doing as well as some graded cards, you're missing out on potential gains on graded as well as raw cards. You've seen a lot of raw cards that are going up right now in the, in the market with the alt cards, alt art cards like, you know, Gengar VMAX, you know, Umbreon VMAX, uh, you know, there's so many, you know, alternate art cards that are going up right now in value, Fusion Strike and Involved in Skies. That's potential gains that you're, you're missing out on in the raw section, right? So... Let's say on a good year, potentially on a good year, right? On average, let's say uh, this 10 grand gains 20%, okay? Let's say you get 5% gains in sealed. Let's say you get 10% in graded. And let's say you get I don't know, 5% in raw, okay? 20%. What is that 20% gonna look like? Well, that's gonna be an additional two grand that you just made on your initial investment, which is gonna be 12 grand. Boom. Now, you just make 20% on your gains, okay? Now, it can definitely go up way more than this. I'm just putting 20% as kind of an example, right? 20%. Now, what happens if everything goes up and it's a good year? Good year, right? Solid year. You're going to have to basically talk to yourself, analyze with the markets and see what's going on and say, when is the markets going to correct? At some point, it just cannot continue to go up forever, right? It can't because obviously there has to be market corrections along the way or a crash potentially. So you have to consider taking your profits. That's basically what you know they say in the investment world that you want to take your profits, right? So taking your profits, 
20%, right? You grow, this is, by the way, this is, this is net profit, by the way, not gross profit. Gross profit would probably be like right around 32, 33% because you got to factor in all the fees you have to pay on eBay if you're going to liquidate all this off of eBay, right? This is still a great return, two grand in one year. That's a great return, right? And then now you have 12 grand as your new buying power, okay? And you just continue to uh, rinse and repeat every single cycle, right? And the reason why, you know, you have to pay attention to the markets and the reason why I think you should be taking profits is because you don't know if a product's gonna continue to go up parabolically. There could be small corrections, there could be a crash, but you seriously don't know. You and I both don't know if Evolve in Skies is gonna become a $10,000 box. Can you even fathom that in your mind that Evolve in Skies, one day, the booster box can become a 10 grand box? Well, on paper, it's a very highly, highly, you know, it's, 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 it's highly in demand, let's just say. Everybody wants Evolve in Skies. Now, will that demand diminish over time? It could, it for sure could, right? Just because a base set first edition uh, Pokemon box is worth, you know, a quarter million dollars, right? Does not mean it's in high demand. Just keep that in mind, right? It's not in high demand. Now, the reason why it's at that price is because of scarcity and the demand over the years, but people have moved on eventually. It's gonna be very hard to find a buyer that's gonna buy that quarter million, uh, you know, that quarter million, uh, you know, first edition uh, base set, right? But if the person that held on to that long to that box would have sold at 100 grand or 120 or 150 grand, and, and there would be potentially more buyers that are willing to buy the box at that price at the time. So you have to basically, holding forever is, in my opinion, a fallacy that I will get into in a different video, but you should be taking your profits on a cyclical, in a cyclical uh, manner, in my opinion. This is my opinion. Uh, but yes, this is what this would look like if you had 10 grand, what I would do with that 10 grand and allocate your money wisely, and this is how I would do it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you, if you found this video insightful and educational, Go ahead and leave me a comment and leave me a like. Uh, let me know what I should go over next time. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one, guys. And have a great rest of your weekend. Peace.